So what we're going to do now is sew off some different thicknesses of material. They're all lycra based, some stretchier than others, some thinner than others. Now I want you to note that we're using the top cover seam. The top cover seam causes a chain, which allows you to actually sew and chain off. But the uh, thread is still connected under the needle plate, which you can't have because you'll then start on an angle instead of starting straight on. So what you have to do is turn the machine back to you, lift the foot, turn it forward, and you can see that now the thread is pulling out. So you insert your garment under the foot. You can do a couple of stitches by hand if you like, just to make sure. Now we're coming to the beginning of the last sew and the end of our stitch. So we want to do what's called an overlap seam. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually sew over the, the stitch about a half an inch to an inch to lock it in. Now this locks in our seam so it won't unravel. And then again, just bring the needles down and then up, lift the foot and just pull the work out. And you can see it's over sewn and locked in. So another way we can do this, and as you do this, you'll now be able to put your material in. So as we're sewing, and again, do we come to our end, heel back, only this time, give yourself some loose thread here, turn the hand wheel towards you, and then back, lift the foot, and pull the material. So now after you have the material out, and you can see there's no chain here, so you're able to feed another piece of material under the foot. And just begin to sew, the same as you did on the last one. So we're sewing, you're trimming off the access from the start of the seam. And again, we're going to overlap, heel back on the machine, the needles lift. Give yourself some slack on your needle thread. Just turn the hand wheels back to you and then forward a little and pull the thread out. And trim it off and you have your over sew on the seam. So what I'm going to do now is just go through some thicknesses of material. So you can see this, this is actually a fleece. It's a, it's a heavy material. Again, it only has two needles. So what has happened here is the center needle was taken out and the cover seam thread is not used. So you just have a two needle chain stitch, of course, with the, the cover on the bottom. And I've already undid the chain so I can get the material under. And this is a fairly heavy material that's used in, in a lot of sportswear or outerwear. So we load it in, turn it a couple times by hand, get the stitch locked in. Now, when you come to a heavy seam like this, don't zoom over it too fast, slow down a bit, and then you can resume your speed. If you're going to sew the heavy seams really fast, it just gives more possibility of trouble because of the thickness of the material. So we're gonna over sew it a bit, heel back, lift the foot, give myself some slack, move the hand wheel back and forth to get the stitch loose, cut the threads, and you have an over sewn locked in seam. And that's on 
a really heavy fleece. So what I'm going to do now is do a very light lycra. As you can see, this stuff is really stretchy compared to the fleece. So my chain is unlocked so I can get my material under. Drop the foot on it. Again, I'm gonna turn the hand wheel away from me a couple of stitches just to start the seam. And now I'm gonna start the toe. And I'm not so worried about going fast over the seams of this light material because the seams are very thin. So again, overlap, heel back, give yourself a bit of slack, lift the foot, pull the material. Don't pull it too tightly because it is very light and you can actually want to make the stitch pull together. So then just trim it off. And that is your very thin compared to your very thick. Now I didn't make any changes. I didn't have to make any changes. All I basically did to sew one to the other was a speed adjustment going over the heavy seams, which is very important. And I also have uh, more variety of work here uh, that's common in the sportswear and leisure wear. So again, we will just start with our hem. Again, this is fairly heavy, okay? You've got some material here that's heavy to go for the needle to penetrate, and it's also a very small seam. So be careful going over it, and then you can go fast. Again, just pull the thread, overlap it, heel back, give yourself a bit of slack, and just pull it out and then you trim it off and your seam is good and again this is like a medium weight material put it under the foot start to sew the seam is a little bit heavy on this one too so um, Try to slow down a bit going over the seams when, when it's heavy. Uh, it's a good practice to get in whenever you're sewing anything because the sudden change in the thickness of the materials can um, cause problems with anything. And there's our oversaw. And we will do another one, as you can see. Again, it's a bit heavy. I'm using a size 80 meter, which is a size 12. Give yourself a little bit of slack here, pull it out, and cut the thread. You don't need a whole lot of excess thread to start the stitch. You got two or three inches, it's fine. And you can see. And this is our last sample that we're going to do. So one of the things also that you can do is to see what might be giving you a problem when you look at the stitch aesthetically is adjust the tensions a little bit yourself. Now, if you can see what happened here, the thread pulled to one side, because what I did was I opened up one of the needle tension discs, releasing the tension. So understanding needle tension, looper tension, 
and spreader tension is very important when you're running this. So when you're running it, you want very little tension on your upper spreader or your looper, because what's going to happen is if you increase um, the tension too much on it, then it can actually cause it to pull in. So what I've done there was physically grab the upper spreader tension between my fingers and pinched it tightly. And now you can see the difference in the stitch, how it looks narrower and how it's actually pulling the outside needle threads in towards the stitch. So understanding how the tensions work is very important on operating this machine. So as you can see, this is the way a stitch is supposed to be formed. So if you have too much tension on your upper spreader, it's going to pull the two outside needles in. And also, if you have too much tension on your lower looper, it's going to do the same thing. Now, if you don't have enough tension on your spreader, you're going to see loops coming on the outside here. And it's going to give a very a loose stitch effect. So it is under, uh, it's important to understand when you're setting um, tensions on a sewing machine that it is a delicate thing. It's not just winding tensions, it's understanding what does what. So you start off with your, your upper spreader and your looper thread very, very, very loose. If it's not tight on the outside needle threads, if you are getting loops, then slowly turn your tension in until you get the stitch to look the way you want it to look. 